good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or whenever you may be listening to the Growing Our Future podcast. If you want to know what the future is, you grow it. And we are trying to have uh, experts and, and leaders and folks that provide insights and wisdom join us where we can share some strategies for personal and professional career development so that we know that our community, state, and country will have an incredible, incredible future. Uh, we're honored today to have Tom Ziegler, CEO of Ziegler Inc. I know many people may be familiar with the Ziegler name, the Ziegler brand. And uh, Tom and I've talked many times and I've shared with him the personal story of how his father, the late Zig Ziegler, was one of my mentors and he never even knew it. Uh, it was the book, See You at the Top. As a matter of fact, maybe if it not had been for See You at the Top, Tom, I might not have had a speech that would have landed me the state FFA presidency, which would have landed me in a career where our paths would cross. But by the grace of God, our paths have crossed, and it's an honor to, to get to know you, have gotten to know you, and also have you serve on the Texas FFA Foundation Board of Directors. But with that, Tom, I want to start all of our podcasts off. You're going to love this, by the way, by sharing what we're grateful for, Tom Ziegler. As you introduce yourself to the Growing Our Future podcast listeners, what are you grateful for today? Gosh, I don't think we have enough time. You know, it starts with God, my relationship there, my family, my wife and daughter. Uh, my daughter got married last year, and they're just doing fantastic uh, business. has been really, really good. We, instead of participating in the great resignation. We decided to call it the great reimagination. And I'm on a mission um, that I'm grateful for, and that is to equip, support, develop, and encourage the next generation of coach leaders. One of the challenges our country faces is we have a leadership void. Uh, but the good news is, is that we have an answer. And for people who want to step up and and lead with example and by example so they can have influence, there's never been a better time than right now. People are hungrier than ever for good leadership. And so anybody listening where you're thinking that's your future, you're in the right place. People are desperate for good leadership and they will follow it when they see it walked out. Uh, so I'm grateful for that opportunity uh, in, in the world that we have today. We've just got an amazing team of people around us uh, and so I look out every day and I just can't believe it. It's like opportunity is everywhere. The world calls it problems. I call it opportunity because the more problems there are, that means the more people you can serve. And when you serve people, I think the creator of the universe smiles. Well, I guess we can wrap. That was good. I, that was outstanding. <laughs> Tom, there's, um, I want to talk about you here in just a minute, Tom Ziegler, but let's start with maybe a reference of your dad. Uh, there's going to be some listeners listening that are older. They're going to remember Zig Ziglar. Some may have even had the, the opportunity to have seen him in person. There's a lot of people that may have heard the name Zig Ziglar and maybe read a quote or two. Tell us briefly a little bit about your dad, Zig Ziglar, and uh, how he rose to where he was at. And, and did he have any relationship with the FFA? If, you, if there's anything there that you can remember, so let's dive into that and then let's talk about you. All right. Well, of course, uh, dad, uh, he wrote, it's north of 45 books. It keeps going up because we keep transcribing his speeches and turning them into books uh, mm -hmm. since he passed away. And he, you know, for me, as good as he was on stage, he was even better off stage. Uh, the people who got to meet him know that and, and say that, wow, he inspired, he motivated, he he wrote some amazing books, but the way he treated people one-on-one, -on -one, that's what set him apart. And I tell people, you know, nobody can be Zig Ziglar on stage, but we can all be Zig Ziglar off stage. And that's a powerful principle. He had a tough start in life. Uh, you know, he, he was the 10th of 12 kids. His dad died when he was five. Uh, he started working in the garden when he was uh, five years old, got his first paying job when he was six years old. Uh, he tells a story about uh, milking cows and, and he always gets a laugh because he, he would say cows, cows don't give milk. You got to take every drop of it. 
<laughs> so I can imagine little six-year-old hands doing that chore. Um, and, you know, as he was growing up and he struggled in the beginning. And I think it was that struggle uh, that allowed him to connect with people because everybody, no matter where they start in life, uh, they have a struggle along the way. And when you can understand that everyone has struggles and that then you then have a choice as to how you're going to handle that or who you're going to seek help from and that it's okay if you get knocked down. I mean, cause that's life, but we got to get back up. So all of that led to an amazing legacy. Um, his impact on his family, you know, dad always said, you never would have heard of Zig Ziglar if it wasn't for the redhead. And that, of course that's mom. And that just tells you something about him. And he was right too. Mom was amazing. Uh, she, she graduated a few years ago, but I get to live out this foundation that, that dad created and my mission's a little bit different. My skill set's uh, different. So I'm about equipping other speakers, trainers, and coaches to go out and take this life-changing message. Uh, that's what gets me excited. And, and really, for me, over the next 20 years, God grants that, it, it's going to be about equipping leaders um, and helping leaders walk out the 10 virtues that we talk about in the new book. So anywhere in the world I go, if, if there's more than 20 people in the room, there's at least one Zig Ziglar fan in there. So I've got a friend and family because they know me better than I know them, right? They've listened to the audios. They've read the books. Two of dad's quotes. Uh, one is his most famous. You can have everything in life you want if you'll just help enough other people get what they want. That's his most famous quote. That's just the golden rule said in a different way. There are literally tens of thousands of businesses in, in the world that that's their, that's their foundational philosophy of how they do business. And it comes right out of uh, dad's work. Uh, the second Zig Ziglar quote, this is my favorite, says this, you are what you are and where you are because of what's gone into your mind. Mm -hmm. And you change what you are and change where you are by changing what goes into your mind. I love that quote. Uh, that was the number one lesson that dad taught me. And that is that when we choose the right input, we have chosen a future that's rich and full and gives every possibility for opportunity. If you're not happy with where you are right now, dad said this, that's okay. You, you can change your input and that will change your thinking and your thinking will change your actions and your actions will change your results. So, so you can change where you are right now if you're not happy with it or who you are right now if you're not happy with that by just choosing the right input. And that's a message of hope that, that never grows old. It never expires. It's always true. And when you see uh, people who, who achieve a level of, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say success, I'm going to say legacy. People who achieve a level of legacy where the people around them are doing better than they thought possible, that's legacy, right? When you, when you transfer this wisdom and somebody else excels, that's what they have understood is they've constantly got to grow and feed their mind the right things. Wow. There's a lot of wisdom there, by the way. And I want to say this, I'm going to be a little biased here. Uh, I will say that, you know, uh, while the audience that will hear this will be beyond the ranks of the FFA, if there is a student out there or a teacher who heard what Tom just said, know this. In life, we're all looking or we should be looking for a competitive edge. What gives us a better chance of success? That could be relationships, job opportunity. What gives a, a competitive edge is what gives us a better chance. And I got to say that we know statistically that if you're in the FFA, uh, you graduate high school at a higher rate, you go to college at a higher rate, you graduate college at a higher rate, you have fewer incidents in high school. We know that employers love when they see 4-H or FFA on a, on a job application because they know exactly what you bring to the table. It's exactly what Tom just said. You've, and you, you've chosen to empower yourself with a professional network and with assets that a lot of your peers may not have done. And uh, I compliment anyone who's taken advantage of that. Matter of fact, I would even tell you, if, if you do not have a copy of 
see you at the top or even Tom's latest book. I, and I, I will tell you on a personal note, I recently went through the Ziegler uh, 10 Leadership Virtues for Disruptive Times Coach Leader Workshop. I can personally tell you there is incredible value in that book. There's probably going to be very few instances in a lifetime where everybody that you run into, either in your family or in organizations or in business, have all experienced the same thing. COVID is one of those times. We are all coming out of this having all been affected by it in many, many ways. Business was disrupted too. Opportunities were disrupted, but they've also been presented. And Tom's book really leans into that, uh, into how to take advantage of the opportunities that exist in this new environment that we find ourselves. Um, Tom, with that, what would be three leadership skills? I, I know you could probably give us hundreds, but let's talk about what a student may need or, a, or a, maybe a teacher right now. If you could kind of whittle that down to three, what would they be? Wow. Well, the first one is, I call it the, the coach leader mindset. And I'm just going to tell a story because I think it illustrates it perfectly. And that is I'm a golfer and well, I used to be a golfer in college and, and, and I love golf. Tom Watson was one of my heroes. He won eight major championships, five of them British opens. Now, if you don't know anything about golf, just know that the British open, it's always played on a seaside links course over in, in uh, great Britain. And the weather is usually really bad. So you've got sideways wind, you've got sleet, you've got temperature changes or sideways rain, and it's nasty. And uh, he won five of those. He won five of those British Open championships. How did you win five British Open championships? And he said this, he said, bad weather. And they said, what do you mean? And he said, well, when I go into a tournament and I'm playing well, I'm only competing against 20 of the 150 players in the field because he was an elite player. Uh, and when Tom was playing well, there was only about 20 other pros who could keep up. But when the weather got bad, he was only competing against five because mentally they let the weather get to them. And so they asked Tom, how do you prepare for a British Open? And he said this, I pray for rain. <laughs> so the mindset of a coach leader is coach leaders love disruption. The more change that's out there, the more disruption that comes, the more opportunity there is. That's when we excel. That's when we develop our team. That's when we maximize whatever the situation is around us. So that's the first one. The second one is coach leaders who have, uh, or a leadership principle, is when you are working with somebody on your team, you have an intentional coaching conversation with them every week. Gallup said it's the silver bullet. Uh, and the coaching conversation should have two focuses in it, goals and growth. So you got a team member. And, and so, by the way, uh, if you look in the mirror as a student, you can coach yourself. And so I want you to think you're a coach leader and the person in the mirror is who you're coaching right now. So you ask yourself this question in a coaching conversation. So if you're a leader and you got people who report to you, you ask them. If you're a student, you're looking in the mirror, you're asking yourself. What attitude can I demonstrate this week that will allow me to perform better in my role? What effort can I demonstrate this week that will allow me to perform better in my role? What skill can I develop this week that will allow me to perform better in my role? So if you're a student and your goal is to go to college and get a scholarship or whatever that is, it's all about attitude, effort, and skill, right? You got to own that. And if you're a leader and you've got people on your team, your goal is to equip them to be more capable tomorrow than they are today. And the way you do that is you let them own their own personal and professional development plan. So you ask them, hey, how can you be more effective demonstrating the right attitude in your job role? And let them tell you, 
And out of that, people start to take ownership of their attitudes, their efforts, and their skills. And that's how performance happens. That's the second thing. The third one, I just like this acronym. It's real easy. Uh, so if, if you are leading a meeting, right, if, if you are in a business and you're leading a meeting, or if you're in a student association, FFA, and you're leading a meeting, just remember air. Everybody needs air. And here it is. They need appreciation, inspiration, and recognition. So appreciate the people in the, on, in the meeting, but don't stop there. Turn it over to other people in the meeting to appreciate each other, or maybe somebody who's not in the meeting. You start off, and this only takes a couple of minutes, and then bring some inspiration. Whether you bring an inspiring story or show a video or read something out of a book or share a quote, or you get somebody else on the team to do it, we need to lift the spirits, right? People need encouragement because it's tough out there. So as leaders, we got to bring that encouragement, that inspiration. And then the third R or is recognition. So appreciation, inspiration, recognition. Recognition, if somebody's done something extraordinary, they've gone beyond the normal. They've, they've completed the task. They've performed at a high level. Recognize them in front of their peers. Let the team know, let the group know that, hey, this deserves some recognition. And if you really want to go deep, so Aaron, this is kind of the ninja version. Okay, we're going to go all the way in. Let's just say somebody worked really hard to get a project done and they had to overcome a lot of obstacles to do it. You could say, great job. I recognize you for getting that job done on time and on budget. Well done. That's like an A minus recognition. We need to do that. The A plus is, is when you go the extra mile and you say, and the reason I, I'm recognizing you for this is not only did you do a great job, but it really speaks to your commitment and your discipline and your integrity. Wow. And what you do is you recognize the character qualities that they displayed in the achievement that you're recognizing. And the reason is, is because let's just say it's a, it's a sales organization and you recognize somebody for, for landing a big deal. And all you do is say, you got the big deal. That's great. You're going to make a lot of money on that. The company's going to make money. Fantastic. But what if the deal falls through? Mm. two weeks later was the recognition worthless if all we valued out of that was the result of a closed deal or would it still have value if you said the reason i'm recognizing you is your commitment your discipline and your integrity to doing it the right way because we don't win every deal in life and sometimes things go against us and so if we're going to develop people who are growing, we want to recognize the things that matter, whether we win this particular deal or not. It's uh -huh. like a, a student who enters a competition and they give it all they got and they overcome incredible adversity and they get second. That's okay because the integrity, the commitment, the discipline, all those things that they had to display in order to get there, that serves you for the rest of your life. Sometimes you get second and it's just a genetics thing. It has nothing to do with you. In fact, <laughs> you did more than everybody else. So we judge people. Well, I don't want to say judge. We recognize people on their attitude, their effort, and their skill, and their decision to maximize those things. That's how we want to recognize people. So that's air. I really like that, by the way. And uh, I, I think really just to drill down, maybe a reason I like it a little bit. Uh, anybody that knows me knows I'm always asking, what's your why? I'm always wanting to dig deeper. What, what is it that drives you? What is that core value? And what I really like about what you said was it goes beyond just, quote, the job. It really drills down into the why did you think it was important enough to, to go that extra mile and to put in that extra effort and to try to make that positive difference for the organization? Uh, that's, that's pretty powerful. Yeah. Um, dad had a quote on this, um, that I think ties in. He, dad said, or Zig Ziglar said, success is the maximum utilization of the abilities that God gave you. 
And so that's what we want to recognize in people is how are they maximizing the abilities that God gave them? And guess what? We all have those virtues inside of us. We all have integrity and honesty and commitment and discipline, but we don't maximize them like we can't, like we can. And so whenever somebody does that, whatever virtue it is, whenever they maximize it, go all out in it. That's what we really want to recognize is that. That's good stuff. Uh, Just in terms of opportunities, looking ahead, I, I could talk about, we could talk about food. We could talk about international trade. You, you deal with a lot of companies, you deal with a lot of organizations. If I'm a kid right now and I'm listening to the news or I'm scrolling through social media, there's a lot of negativity out there. If I can kind of sift through the negativity and I can kind of look around the corner a little bit, are there opportunities ahead of Tom Ziegler? Yeah. Well, I've got that bear in the woods story that I it's just so bad. It's good. Two hikers, they've finished hiking. They're sitting around the campfire. They've got their shoes off and the big grizzly bear comes in. And the first hiker says, run, run, run. The grizzly bear is going to eat us. And he looks down and the second hikers tying his shoes, putting his shoes back on. And the first hiker says, we got to run. We got to outrun the bear. And the second hiker says, I don't have to outrun the bear. I just got to outrun you. And so when we look at all the problems, all the negativity, all the press clippings, all the social media, you know, divisiveness, whether it's inflation or Ukraine or COVID or it doesn't really matter. Just remember, you're not you're not trying to outrun COVID. You're you're not trying to outrun uh, Ukraine or, or inflation. You understand that there are so many problems out there that you can serve people in that you just got to outrun the other people who were worried about getting eaten by the bear. That's it. That's it. That's all you got to worry about. So how do I become a more capable person tomorrow than I am today? And when you focus on that and your heart is to serve other people, to help them, to bring them with you, (laughs) right. To help them tie their shoes and show them, look, don't worry about the bear. We just got to outrun all these other people who are sitting here stuck in the muck, right? And, and, and as leaders, we bring as many as we can. But go back to the first thing. People got to have that right mindset, right? They got to have that hope. They got to understand that, you know what, this is the way life is, but we do it anyway. We win anyway. Uh, you'll be okay. If you, if you start buying into the negative press, um, it's a long road and it's no fun either. I mean, it's just no fun. So might as well tie those shoes and get running. Well, I tell you, I can't think of a better way to kind of wrap up what we've talked about because that's what this podcast is about. That's what the Texas FFA Foundation is all about. We want to do everything we can. I tell sponsors all the time, at the end of every dollar, at the end of every penny that's given to the Texas FFA Foundation, there's an opportunity for a kid or an opportunity for a teacher, because we want to give people those skills to get better. We hope that the guests that come on this podcast provide some insight, some air, some opportunity, some perspective that somebody says, if they can do it, maybe I can too, or I never thought about that, or or maybe I need to look closer into that. And I think that that, um, that's what we're trying to achieve here. And Tom uh, can't say thank you enough. I want to brag on this man for a minute and and say this. Um, It can never be easy to be the son, daughter of the great Zig Ziglar and to be saddled with the responsibility of carrying on a brand, to carry on a company. That's a big responsibility. And I got to say that having had the opportunity to work with Tom Ziglar, I've seen firsthand the dignity, respect, and integrity he brings to his role. But more importantly, I know that his dad's got to be smiling because Tom is cutting his own teeth and his own teeth and leadership is legacy. And I'm loving watching what he's doing. I absolutely love it because I will tell you this. I just watched, I just watched Tom Ziegler do a workshop and there were moments that he had motions and facial expressions and hand gestures that I go, that's Zig up there. That's Zig Ziegler. But then as I listened, 
I know that Zig and the redhead are smiling because their son is also sharing his voice and his perspective on leadership and legacy. And Tom, you said it, and, and, and I think it's in our ambassador room. It's one of our posters. We're all going to leave a legacy. It's either going to be by design or default and by choosing to win, by choosing the right inputs, by choosing to invest and empower others. I think we're choosing to live a legacy by design. I just want to say thank you for what you're doing. All right. Thanks, Aaron. It's, it's awesome to be here. It's an honor to be here. And the FFA impact and legacy goes way back. I can remember, gosh, 80s, early 90s. Uh, Dad got to speak at some of the big national conventions. And those FFA national officers came through our house. I remember meeting them uh, mm -hmm. when they would come through. So um, I remember dad coming back and said, you know what? The kids that go there, they're different and I like them. <laughs> so, so we've had a long, long history uh, with FFA and it's because of the core values, right? That's just what it boils down to. So an honor to be here, an honor to serve uh, with you. Uh, on the foundation board. So let's have a little fun. So let's have a fun question here to kind of wrap up with. Tom Ziegler, what's the best concert you've ever been to? So I haven't really been to many concerts. And so this is going to be a really weird, because uh, less than like two or three concerts. Michael Buble. Oh, Buble. I'm a Buble fan. Yeah. So we go there and... Uh, it was just a show watching my wife, <laughs> watching all the women in that audience. Because <laughs> it was like, oh, just a connection. Now, I saw uh, it wasn't a concert. It was a show, The Greatest Showman. That's my favorite. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's my favorite experience. Some might call it a concert because it's kind of a musical. Yeah. But, but they were singing other people's songs where Buble was singing his songs. And, and uh was that yeah. Buble concert at American Airlines Center? Yes, it was. I, I think I was there with you and uh, my wife and I, because um, I think it was your family that was sitting directly behind me because they were enjoying the concert exactly as you were describing. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was just watching everybody. That was, that was a lot of fun. Anyway, all right. Well, Tom, thank you for joining us for the podcast, Growing Our Future. Uh, we always tell people, if you want to know what the future is, grow it. Think about that. If you want to know what the future is, grow it. That means you got to plant the seeds, you got to nurture its growth, and then you got to grow it up strong and healthy. And uh, I believe that's what we're trying to do in our families, in our communities, our state, and our country is make it better. And uh, your, your input today, Tom, are seeds of greatness. So thank you so much for sharing. Thank you all for listening. And tune in to the next podcast of Growing Our Future or we'll have somebody else come on board, share some insights, perspectives, and seeds of greatness. Thank you for joining us, Tom. Thank you. Thank you.